Amanda, you've got to tell us why exactly you decided to get something like this even started. I think it started with all of the, we see all of the single-use plastics and the problems in the news right now, especially with all of the shipping containers being sent to Asia and being returned. And so we have a unit in the grade 9 science curriculum called Sustainable Ecosystems. And we talked about with the class how we actually wanted to do something about single-use plastics and our sustainable and having a sustainable environment rather than just talk about it. Now, that's just it. As a teacher, you could have easily said, okay, here's a textbook or look, let's watch this video or let's have this conversation. How do you get from that to say, no, no, we can actually impact our own world. We can go outside the classroom walls. How did you do that? The amazing thing, too, now is with media and social media, we just put a couple of feelers out there to see who has done things like this before. And Blue Bayfield was uh, a group that started in Bayfield who has done some amazing um, things as far as getting the village of Bayfield to become plastic-free. So that was our first. uh, We reached out to them, and our partnership with them has really made everything else spiral. Shay, you were one of the people who helped to reach out in all of this. Tell us about making contact with Blue Bayfield. Uh, we kind of heard about it, and we, didn't, we weren't really sure what they were doing. And so we decided to do some research up about it, and we actually found contact with them. And Ms. Keller, she met with them and kind of discussed a plan of attack, uh, how we're going to meet with them and see what they have done. So they have made some changes to their community. What was it like learning about that? Was it something you said, hey, I'd I'd like to do this, or or how did you feel about it when you learned about it? Yeah, it was something that we wanted to bring back to Exeter to try to help the environment a little bit and try to spread it around Ontario and the different communities. What was it like being able to do this from your classroom as opposed to just learning something, waiting for the test to arrive, and writing the test? It's definitely something that we can probably fundraise and actually have other people involved. Kayla, maybe you can let us know what you are currently doing because you've you've kicked this off. So what's happening now? We have been selling uh, reusable produce bags and stainless steel straws. The reusable produce bags come in like three different sizes, and we are selling them on School Cash Online, which is accessible by the parents. And how's that been, how has that been going? Have you had a decent response? Are you hoping for a better response? Are you, are you blown away by the response? We have sold about, we have a profit of about $350 from the produce bag so far, which is pretty good. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, and you're also selling reusable straws. For anyone who hasn't seen a reusable straw, what's it look like? Um, they're like... They're just metal straws, stainless steel straws. And is this something that you've now chosen to use day after day whenever you need a straw? Yep. And how has the the sale of the straws gone? Good. We are hoping to get more in the future. Okay, but this has kicked off. How has it been for you being involved in something that you've now turned into more than just science class? It's interesting to see the response of the community and how people have pitched in, and now it's growing bigger and bigger. We are talking with Shay McCann. We are talking with Kayla Orr, and we're about to be talking with Carleen Craig, all from South Huron District High School in Exeter, about science class, taking a step outside the classroom. Carleen, thanks for being here. Can you tell us what you guys are doing next? So our next steps are on May 31st, we are presenting at the Climate Change Forum in Clinton to talk to different businesses on what ideas we have to make Exeter more eco and present our ideas, and they can give us feedback on what else we can do. And on June 3rd, we are presenting to South Huron Town um, Council on ways that we can make Exeter a more eco-friendly place and ways that we can fundraise and maybe put different things around Exeter. Man, this, then, is, this is getting massive. <laughs> yes, it is. And on June 6th, we are going back to Bayfield with 90 students this time to share ideas with Mitchell District High School, and we can also... Um, get feedback from them on how to make this bigger and better. What's it been like for you to be involved in this? Um, 
It's been pretty great. Um, so I know that I'm making an impact on Exeter and making Exeter a better place and more eco-friendly. Man, this this is fantastic. Well, Carlene, congratulations. Thank you for this. Amanda, you have some phenomenal students. This thing has taken off. Did you envision that it could do what it's done, or, or has this just been fun to watch? Um, it's been super fun to watch. I think some of the exciting things are we made a post on our initial, like our Facebook page that we created called Eco Exeter, and it was just a post of all of our students' pictures holding a saying about how we're not asking everyone to go completely waste-free. We're just asking for millions of people to make small changes in order to make a difference. And that post has spread virally. So just on our page alone, it's had up to 25,000 uh, views and I think 200 shares. And then other apps such as um, Random Acts of Green have also shared it. Um, the Zero Waste Chef has shared it. And then we also saw it posted on CBC Waves of Change. So that's been really exciting to see that the community is on board with this. I think everybody is ready to make some changes, and they just needed um, a group like this to say, let's, let's do it. What do you think your students are getting out of this? I think it's interesting to see because not only we're, we're doing the curriculum that we are supposed to be doing, but also they can see that they're actually making a difference in their own communities. A lot of students that uh, go to Exeter High School are also from small communities surrounding the area as far as Grand Bend. So it also then goes back to those small communities as well. Well, congratulations on the initiative. And uh, I can't wait until everybody in your class is running our world. Yeah, I'm excited too. And we're not, we're not going to stop um, at the end of June either for grade 9. A lot of these students are then have grade 10 in the fall. Um, we've also been applying for some student-led initiative grants. So we're hoping that those will come through in the fall and we'll just keep making this even bigger. Outstanding. Well, keep up the good work. Okay, thanks very much.